everybody. Say hi, Shane. Hi. Hi. How's it going, guys? What happened, Shane? The the Toby got hold the tail. Oh, so you're gonna put bandages on him? How many bandages you gonna put? That one. One, two, three, four, five. No, just one. one. Yes. He, he broke his tail. So guys, on today's episode, y'all probably heard of COVID-19, novel coronavirus, the pandemic that just the World Health Organization announced about a week ago. You're gonna put a bandaid on him. Where are you gonna put the bandaid? On the Toby. You're gonna put it on that tail. So you guys probably know that. Most of the grocery stores and pharmacies are running out of hand sanitizers because of this new pandemic that happened. Okay, so Shine has two doggies here. One is Bingo oh, and one is Toby. They both are sick. They're very, very sick. Let's put Band-Aid on Shine. I told! We do it. So you guys probably heard that local pharmacies and grocery stores have run out of hand sanitizers, which can help prevent the germs from spreading. So for people that don't have hand sanitizers, you can always make them at home with two simple ingredients. So today's episode, we are going to be making hand sanitizers. And we will be discussing about COVID-19 novel coronavirus. Finding out where it came from, how it started, um, what we can do to prevent us from getting sick. So please stay tuned and watch this episode. So the first ingredient for hand sanitizer is, this over here is called aloe vera sun gel. You can pick it up at your organic store or any type of supplement store. It's actually really good for skincare and it's good to make hand sanitizer. This is actually the main ingredient for a gel based hand sanitizer. You protecting my hands from the spread of this virus, huh? Thank you, buddy. Kiss. I love you. Yeah. So this over here is yeah. called Everclear Vodka. This is a grain alcohol. It is 151 proof with 75.5% alcohol. I don't know anybody that could drink this. And personally, I would not drink this. But this is actually a great ingredient to mix with the gel to make a hand sanitizer. So these are the two ingredients I just introduced. Plus this is a funnel. And this is an empty spray bottle. The hand sanitizer is going to be in this. So let's start making it. This is a funnel. This is what we are going to make our hand sanitizer in. So let's get started. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to be putting in this spray bottle is aloe vera sanji. It's very heavy. It's actually cost $39, but a big supply like this could last few months. Hey buddy, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job, Shiva. Oh, we're gonna add this stuff. This stuff. What this is, is this that, stuff? This is that evergreen. No, evergreen. you're too small to touch alcohol. This one. No, no. <laughs> no. We have to fight coronavirus. Okay, okay ready? That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, we'll take the funnel out. And then you put this thing on. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna shake. There's no shake, shake, shake. Yes, yes, wait, 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 wait. Shake. Don't shake this. Wait, I didn't even do it! Shine, shake. Shine, stay. Shake, shake. Faster, faster. 
So now we're going to discuss how novel coronavirus came to us and it's affecting all these people and you know how it started and what we can do to prevent it. So as you've been hearing on the news, coronavirus came from Hubei province, a city called Wuhan. Uh, they have a lot of wet markets there that sell exotic animals like snakes, bats, uh, penguins, um, foxes, raccoons, everything. So what scientists are saying by research is that a bat somehow, maybe by urine or by blood, infected a penguin, which is like an armadillo. So that penguin was then eaten by somebody which somehow spread, which is also called a spillover. And this strain of, of coronavirus has never been seen before. It's almost the same gene pool as SARS. Like it's 75% similar to SARS, but just the mortality rate is a little bit lesser than SARS was. So that's one theory of how the virus started. Theory number two is, Theory number two is that in Wuhan, there's a biological weapons grade laboratory that basically works with all types of, you know, infectious diseases and viruses and organisms. And so what, you know, conspiracy theories are saying now is that the virus was created. So, meaning by created is this coronavirus, like, it, it was basically the same gene pools as SARS, 75% similar to it. So, it was created and by accident, someone working there might have, you know, gotten infected. And this person became a super spreader. And then China's a very populated place, there's almost like a billion people in China. There is a billion people in China. So, this person went around spreading this virus and that the Chinese government, it's a communist government, so pretty much like they they don't want the world to know what's exactly going on. So like this person went around spreading it to everybody and now it became, you know, it became an outbreak. So many theories out there, but these are the two most irrelevant ones and the two most ones that sound most, you know, fictional, right? But everybody's entitled to their own opinion. So it's whatever you want to believe, but the main thing is how are we going to protect ourselves? So to protect ourselves, we need to take proper precautions and you know make sure that your loved ones are safe, you're safe. Because right now the virus is it's airborne, like meaning that if someone coughs, the 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 virus. The organism lives in the atmosphere for about three hours to four hours, which is actually very bad. Because, especially for elderly people and children, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. So, wearing a mask. Like a lot of people, you see people are going crazy, they're buying masks, they're buying toilet paper, everything. Personally, what I think about a mask is that it's a 50-50% chance. You understand? If you wear it or you don't wear it. But the best way to do this and not to get airborne is to keep your distance. Basically, if you're, you know, you're close with somebody, it's it's likely to affect you or infect you actually. But if you're in a distance about maybe three feet, you know, maybe even a meter, the the distance is it's it's gonna make a big difference. So you don't really have to wear a mask. It's, you know, it's a lot of people are making it look like doomsday. Number two, to protect yourself is always make sure your hands are clean. Proper hygiene is a must. As you see, we made hand sanitizer for like a hundred bucks here. You know, like, you know, this stuff can last you a lot of money. You know what I mean? Like regularly, make sure your hands are clean. You know what I'm saying? Like you have proper hygiene. You, you make sure that anything you touch any surface you touch you make sure you use hand sanitizer after to just protect your hands because another way this virus spreads is that if you sneeze cough anything 
particles get on your hand and that can get into your mouth or your nose and this 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 virus can can live on surfaces for 12 hours the third way to protect yourself is the most important way it's called don't panic because the more you panic the more likely you are to get sick it's a proven fact that stress is a major cause of illness you have to stay strong you have to stay motivated you have to have faith in god it is declared a pandemic doesn't mean that it's doomsday or it's the end of the world we need to protect ourselves we need to protect people around us we need to be as one because this will continue to spread because it's a it's an airborne it's an influenza it's a coronavirus you know what i mean lucky it's not ebola or else we'd be in trouble <laughs> you know what i mean so this virus will continue to spread they're predicting about maybe 30 to 40% maybe 50% of the world this this is a computer prediction it's not a it's not a it's not proven facts yet but i believe everything is in god's hand like if you look at the 1918 spanish flu um that occurred medical systems and healthcare and was 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 not as was was garbage then you know what i mean now we have so much knowledge and so much money invested in our medical that a virus like this won't won't survive for much long so when something like this doesn't survive for that long they are predicting that a vaccine will be created by Canada by June or July so that's that's good news you know so If I were you guys, personally I know what I'm going to do is I I'm I'm not going to go in a lot of public places and big events and where where there's a big gathering of people like pretty much like a hall of gathering of people. So we want to stay away from social investments. Like you know social social kind of being a social outcast until this pandemic slows down. So The way to do that is communicate by Skype, by Viber, by WhatsApp, you know, don't go to the bar, don't go to clubs, you know, don't go to hockey games, don't go to basketball games. You know, the safest place is work and home. And I think if we follow these steps, we'll all be okay. So this concludes today's episode of Shine's Fantopia about COVID-19 novel coronavirus so please take in factor what i said on this episode to keep your hands clean have faith and don't panic thank you very much and i wish you guys the best of luck bye bye